Alright, so I lied. Today's anime does have something in common with Death Parade. A pretty kick-ass opening. Hi, I'm Shonen Jack, and welcome to Day 2 of the 12 Days of Anime. Today I wanted to talk about Yamada-kun and the Seven Wishes. Uh, it's a romance comedy that takes place in a high school, so already we're off to a great start. <laughs> uh, but as you saw at the beginning, one of the first things that struck me about the show was the pretty kick-ass opening. Uh, it's quite uh, pleasant every time I watch it. It's got this painterly look to it. The uh, music flies with the hats uh, that are going around. Uh, but a lot of it does come down to this very strong drum beat at the beginning and the end. Uh, and then it ends with the uh, two main characters sh coyly kissing behind the brim of a hat. It's all very adorable, and I quite enjoy it. Our story stars Yamada-kun, the involuntary delinquent, and Shira Ishii, the bookish, keep-to-herself, top-of-the-class kind of girl. And as with every love story, opposites attract. But, but, the main hook for this series is that there are seven witches at this school, seven girls, each with a supernatural power, and that power is activated by kissing. One of the first powers that we explore in the series is the power to swap bodies, and there's a lot of fun that can be had with that idea. Like, what is the first thing that Yamada does when he finds out that he's swapped bodies with Shira Ishii? Well, he goes off to the bathroom and takes a look at his new body, and we all get to enjoy the view as well. And it's, and it's fun. And this leads to a lot of fun running gags, like yamada -kun as a delinquent, and being in fights a lot, his signature move is a roundhouse kick. But when he does it in a body of one of the girls, he forgets that he's now wearing a skirt. So when he does his roundhouse kick as normal, he, he flashes his panties for the world to see. And there's other gags as well, like uh, the girl Odagiri, uh, who occasionally has a wardrobe malfunction, and but she's totally oblivious to it, and she's being all high and mighty at the same time. So when she finally realizes it and gets embarrassed, it's that much more hilarious. Another strong element to go along with this is the voice acting, because when characters swap bodies, the voices don't necessarily follow the character except for inner monologues. They stay with the body. So what you'll have happen is the voice actors uh, pretending to be each other's characters. All of a sudden, the quiet Shira Ishii is the loud and boisterous Yamada. Uh, and then you'll have things that'll happen where it's levels upon levels upon levels of the characters pretending to be other characters. So you'll have the voice actors being the other person's characters pretending to be their characters. And it's amazing, and it's a great show of talent by the Japanese cast. I really did like that the main gimmick of this series is kissing. Because whereas in other anime you're waiting an entire season for them to do the first kiss, or sometimes you're waiting 150 episodes and then you still get nothing, uh, Yamada does it in the first episode, it does it in the second episode, and multiple times after that. Uh, it treats kissing as a normal thing, as it is. Kissing is not that big of a deal, guys. It doesn't need all of this build-up. And Yamada-kun treats it as an everyday fact of life, and I really appreciate it for that. But that's not to say that the kissing becomes ordinary and boring. It still finds ways to remain special. Like, it'll have little moments of build-up where Yamada is blushing and embarrassed and Shira Ishii is more assertive. Like, my favorite kiss of the series is with the pink-haired girl, uh, Sarushima, who goes in for the tongue. And that's special. That is something. That is hot. As for the moment in question, it happens in episode 2 in a rather expository scene. The members of the Supernatural Research Club, our main characters, uh, are testing the limits of the body-swapping power. So Ito, the uh, other girl in the club, gets very excited about this. Uh, she has Yamada and Shira Ishii swap bodies, and Shira Ishii's pretty nonplussed about all this, so she just goes and reads her book in the corner in Yamada's body, uh, and then Yamada in Shira Ishii's body kisses the other male character in the show for research, guys. Uh, and they swap bodies, uh, and then Ido gets in on the action, she swaps bodies with uh, Miyamoro's body, and immediately checks out his package, uh, and you have uh, Miyamoro looking over her shoulder at his own junk, and that's hilarious. Uh, but then you have 
uh, at the last step of this, you have Miyamura in Shiraishi's body and Yamada in Ito's body go in for the kiss. And it, the guys in the audience are excited about this because it's the two girls kissing. But the girls in the audience are also excited about this, like Ito says, because like they're girls that are kissing, but inside they're men. And that just that gets me. That, that, that's hilarious. And yeah, I'm not usually as charmed by fan service anime, but Yamada kun really got to me. Uh, what I think it comes down to is it gets fan service right, and trust me, I have opinions on fan service. Uh, like, everyone's having a good time, everyone's having fun with it, everyone's getting something that they want out of it. Like, fan service should not make me go, boobs don't work that way! And it shouldn't make other feel people feel uncomfortable, it shouldn't make me feel uncomfortable. Like, fan service, it wants to serve its fans, right? It wants everyone to have fun with the show. So, for one group to be serviced, it should not be excluding another. And that's what Yamaha-kun accomplishes, and that's why I like it so much, and that's why it's uh, one of my 12 moments of the year. Alright, that'll do it for day 2 of my 12 days of anime. Please tell me what you thought of it below. I'm sure we'll cover the topic of fan service again. But for now, we have bigger questions to answer, more philosophical ones. Uh, come join me again for day 3 when we get to that. To be continued until then.